This is Kathy Deaton from Fan the Flame Ministry sharing with you nuggets of godly wisdom. This episode is titled, Jesus, Our Once and for All Great High Priest. I want to read from Hebrews 4, 14-16 in the Message Version. Now that we know what we have, Jesus, this great high priest with ready access to God, Let's not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, all but the sin. So let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy, accept the help. Paul goes to great lengths in this passage to prove that Jesus once and for all became the only high priest we'll ever need to atone for our sins. But he is trying to convince those who had followed the law devoutly for generations so it wasn't always easy to change their way of thinking. In the Old Testament, the high priest was an earthly man that was chosen by God. He was given specific instructions as to how each particular sacrifice was to be made. And once a year, he was to go before God into the Holy of Holies and before the mercy seat to make a sacrifice to atone for the sins of the people. This was a huge ordeal. And the atonement that was made for their sins lasted until the next year at the same time. The high priest could only go in the Holy of Holies where the mercy seat was on the Day of Atonement, on that one day a year. He prepared for many days and even weeks so that he could be holy when he went into the room. He wore bells on the bottom of his outfit and they tied a rope around his leg. It was a must that he be holy and ask God to forgive him of every sin when he entered the room to atone for the sins of Israel. He knew that if he had sin in his own life, he'd be struck dead upon entering the room. A holy God could not look upon sin in this his holy place. So if the people didn't hear the bells tinkling after a certain period of time, they were to drag his body out with the rope that was attached to his leg. This must have been an anxious time for the people of Israel until they learned that their sins had been forgiven and everything was right and good between them and God again for the next year. So that he could become the once and for all high priest who could pave the way for man to be able to reach God, Jesus had to come to earth to live as a man. But he would be conceived by the Holy Spirit himself and live in the world, but never commit sin. How could he have ever become the only high priest we would need to atone for our sin if he was capable of committing sin? He had to be perfect and blameless, then finish his work of atonement by dying on the cross so all our sin could be placed upon him. After he had risen from the grave and ascended back to God, his work as a human on earth was finished. So for his first 30 years, Jesus grew up from infant to man, learned to trade, interacted with others, ate meals, and lived everyday life just like you and me. He was extraordinary, though, even as he lived his everyday life. He experienced every range of emotion that we do, but he gave us an example of how to live a victorious Christian life. So we can never say that God doesn't know what we're going through and that he is cold and impersonal and doesn't care about our every need. Jesus is God in the flesh and he knows us better than we know ourselves. In verse 16 of the King James Version, the Bible says that we can boldly go before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. When God gave instructions to Moses for setting up the tabernacle, he told him that one of the articles to be made was a mercy seat 
This was to be placed in the Holy of Holies. It had two cherubim made of gold and without spread wings that were placed upon it. This was the, to be the place on earth where God himself would live so that they could actually see the manifestation of his presence as they lived in the wilderness on their way to the land he had promised to give them. Paul is saying here that the New Covenant believers don't have to worry about physical sacrifices. Because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, we have the right to come boldly before God's throne and ask Him for what we need. We don't have to approach Him with fear and trembling. And we can come to Him at any time of the day or night or as many times as we need to come before Him. If you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, believe he died for your sins and rose again, believe he is the only way to heaven, God has promised that he will always be there for you in your every moment of need. Jesus will intercede for you before your heavenly Father. And what an awesome thing that is. So in verse 16, draw near to the throne of grace means to keep on coming over and over with a reverent approach. The Bible promises that God will give us the help we need at just the right time. We are his children and he cares greatly for our every need. This is Kathy Deaton from Fan the Flame Ministry sharing with you nuggets of godly wisdom. Please check out my blog at whogodis.com and sign up for my monthly newsletter. I have also written Handbook for Victorious Christian Living, which gives practical ways to learn to hear the Holy Spirit and get grounded in the foundations of the Christian faith. I would also love to interact with you on social media, and you can sign up for podcasts in the iTunes store under either Kathy Deaton or Nuggets of Godly Wisdom. Thank you so much for listening, and may God richly bless you as you seek to follow Him.